What is going on hunters and welcome back to another edition of Helix's Wild Hunts. Today we're going to be hunting two monsters, one which is actually a first generation monster that appeared in Monster Hunter 1 and then the second one is going to be a special Monster Hunter online monster that we're going to be hunting. So it's never been shown before in another series so I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, I'll just give you a hint, it looks like a mixture of a Hermitar and a spider, if that makes any sense to anyone. <laughs> Now, before we begin our hunts, I actually wanted to just show you guys the farm. I've been going through the story mode, progressing further and further, and I've unlocked the Monster Hunter farm where you can actually start upgrading uh, and getting different types of materials without having to actually go out on maps when focus just primarily on the hunts if you'd prefer to. Uh, the best part about this is it reminds me so much of Freedom Unite's farm. It's not like the other games where you send out felines to do the, the farming for you. You actually go in and start harvesting uh, whatever points you have already upgraded or set up in the farm, which is really fantastic. Another thing too you might have noticed, I've actually fixed the audio issue. I've actually started recording my audio on a separate laptop. Uh, this is only a temporary fix, maybe down the road I'll be able to figure out a way to do it without having to... without having to resort to an alternate hardware piece to, to record my audio off of. But for now, this will work and I hope you guys appreciate the effort I've been doing trying to find a solution for it. <laughs> Another important NPC that I've unlocked uh, after going through the story mode is the feline hire lady person. I, I don't know what I was going to call her. <laughs> so here you can actually hire new felines and uh, I unfortunately I don't know what the stats say on them. I'm sure that if you have the Google Translator option, you can actually take a picture of the, the information that's on here and kind of get an idea. I did that actually for my cat, which I've aptly named Meow Meow 101. Say hi Meow Meow. Look how chipper he is. For our first hunt, we're actually going to go after the Gendrome, which is uh, a subspecies of the Velocidrome that we hunted last time. It's, it looks almost like a raptor, but it has paralyzing capabilities, and it's also really fast compared to the Velocidrome. Now, as you can see, we're actually going to be showing off one of the other stages that is available in this game. It's uh, the Desert Stage, and it does have a night and day system, so uh, what I'm picking up right now is actually very important. If you've never played Monster Hunter, you always want to make sure that you bring with you a cool drink to the desert. And the reason for that being is that your health will start depleting slowly if you don't have it active. So make sure to do that every single time you go on a hunt in a desert or warm area. Or even, uh, I guess, the volcano zones if there is any in this game. I just want to take a, a moment here just to show off how beautiful the graphics are in this stage. Like, it looks like a canyon. Like, it looks like you could actually go down there... I don't know if there's any monsters walking around, but in previous Monster Hunters, they usually had them kind of showing up in the background, just to show that there is some wildlife going on. Now, I know I've said it before in a previous episode, but I just want to thank you guys so much for all the comments and feedback again, and even some of the requests that you guys have been making. Uh, I know that a few of you have been asking for me to record certain weapon types, certain missions, and I, I hope to get through those eventually. I'm still... Oh, there's our hunt. So there's the Gendrome. I'm just going to tag him here first and then I'll continue talking. Oh, I totally missed. There we go. <laughs> now, just to give you an idea, for this episode, I'm actually going to be trying out the Longsword. It's another type of weapon that is a lot quicker than the Greatsword and also has a lot of unique properties in terms of being able to do some specific combos and power-ups depending on how many attacks you can land on the monster. Now, I'll show you here if I can even get an attack going. Oh, definitely missed that. Now, as you can see, it does still have a bit of weight and heft to the swings. I think it actually feels a little bit heavier compared to uh, Monster Hunter 4 recently. I know they, they probably made it feel a little bit faster and quicker there. Now, if you look at the top left, you'll see that there is a little red bar filling up as I'm attacking the monster. Now that that bar is flashing, I can unleash a special set of attacks that weren't available prior to this. So if I hit R1, you can see that I'm starting to go really fast, and I got a nice swipe at the end there. It has a long range when you're doing the comboing into the special ability. You can do a lot of different combo sets with it at the same time as well. My weapon is also starting to glow a little bit too. Need to get some more hits in on this guy. Now with the longsword, you want to try to build up that meter as much as possible. And actually, I believe there's three levels to it. I think the final one, it starts going gold if I'm not mistaken. Let me just double check here.
Now, one of the best parts about the moveset that you get with the longsword... Oh, I beat him. Awesome. One of the best uh, parts of the moveset is, if you manage to land the full combo, it actually sheathes your weapon up on its own, so you don't have to worry about doing that yourself and moving around. Plus, it gives you that, that boost in power-up damage, which is really fantastic. Again, I apologize, guys. I, I really thought that I would do better with the longsword, but it's been a while since I've used it, so I gotta get reaccustomed to its uh, capabilities. So that was the Gendrome. Alright, my cat leveled up to level 7. That's a good shot here. And that's the first time that I guess I've killed the monster. <laughs> so it doesn't show another size. For our next hunt, we're going to be hunting a unique monster to Monster Hunter Online called Baladay. And this is a mean, big, shelled spider. So, uh, one thing that I did want to find out from you guys if you've been playing this game is there was a neat little cutscene during the story mode that introduced this monster. I would love to be able to record it for you guys so you can see how it looks. But uh, I didn't get a chance to record it because I was having some uh, issues recording during that day. So if you guys know, please let me know in the comments. I would love to hear if there's any way to actually watch old videos from previous hunts or story mode. Now before we begin this hunt, I've been asked by a few people already how the pay-to-play system works in this game. And to some extent, you can get away with it, especially if you can only play a few hours here and there like I am doing right now currently. But uh, in other ways, uh, there is some restrictions compared to other Monster Hunter games. The way it works is there is a level cap system. I don't know how much experience you're capped on initially, but... In order to unlock new monsters and new gear and being able to equip those skills and abilities, you have to be able to actually gain those levels. So once you hit that level cap, unless you're actually paying the, for the VIP account, then you're uh, kind of restricted to how much you can actually get accomplished in the game or during that play session. Also, when you're going on hunts, you actually need either hunting tickets or from the looks of it, I'm not sure if this was a recent update, but whenever you select a hunt now, I think it gives you the option to either pay from your characters uh, the, the money that you earn from doing your hunts or using a hunting ticket. Once you are out of the hunting tickets, then you pretty much are stuck waiting until you can actually play the next time. You won't be able to actually go on hunts that way. Now here's Baladay. He is a mean-looking spider crab thing. Oh crap, and I just got stunned by one of the bugs. It's not good, not good, not good, not good. He has the capability of being able to inflict you with a slow debuff if you walk into his webs. And he also has a, a lot of several charging attacks that you gotta be careful for, as you saw there. Now let's see if I get the opportunity to actually... Use the longsword to its best capabilities here. Uh, he, as you can see, if you stay too far behind him, he actually does also... ...spit webs right on your character if you're not careful. Let's see if I get a good combo here. Nice. It's worth it! I think I've realized that I'm not too big of a fan of the longsword, but then again, maybe it's just because I, I am not doing too well with it. Also, it does feel heavier than other Monster Hunter games. Uh oh See, now I am stuck in its web at the moment, and it's going to give me a good hit here. And of course, my cat is nowhere to be found helping me out. I'm going to use that up. Oh, so I walked into the web a little bit there. As you can see now, my, my debuff is on. It says four seconds. That I'm going to be running slow. It's a little bit different than other Monster Hunter games. It actually shows you the kind of debuff and the length of time or buffs that you get, I believe. Oh my goodness! I don't know about you guys, but hunting with these little bugs flying around is pretty, pretty annoying. I'm not doing too well getting my full combo out, and it's kind of really irritating me. Now, if there's any weapons you want me to kind of showcase in this uh, game, just let me know in the comments below. Oh, I just got hit by... everything. <laughs> nice. So now I have the full buff going on with the, the longsword. As you can see, it's glowing bright red. 
waste that charge. I got any closer again. Now there are parts to break on him. I'm not I was able to break his shell once. I don't know if I should call it the shell. Here, let me take this opportunity while while he knocked me into the other zone to re-sharpen my weapon and heal a little. Okay, so as you can see there, I already shattered it, and now you see some gross brain-like pulsing in the back. <laughs> Let's get some good combos going here. Worth it! I'm gonna try to guide him a little bit away, because it's kind of annoying fighting right at the zone point. Validate, come here. Oh, I stepped into his web. I didn't even see the webbing. Let's see if I can break. Oh. I was trying to break his arm pieces there. I've done that before too with the greatsword. And that was Balladay, guys. Uh, again, the challenge is starting to increase a little bit, but it's still accessible enough currently that it's not proving too difficult, especially if you played other Monster Hunter games. I'm actually very curious once they start throwing some of the more urgent quest missions where... or when we actually get to run into the title monster, which I, I don't know the name of it yet, but once we get to it, for sure you'll know. <laughs> All right, Hunters, that's another two successful hunts. Thanks so much for joining me. And remember, if you want to see anything featured specifically in future episodes, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Uh, again, I love hearing from you guys, and it's been a blast communicating with everyone. And if you have any questions at all about the game, I'll try my best to answer them. I'm still learning, obviously, navigating the, the Mandarin menus is not the easiest thing. But if I can find the answers for you, I'll try to include it in another episode down the road. So thanks again for watching. Happy hunting, guys, and I'll see you all on the next level.